ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, the plays of the thing with your host, Judy Sleed. Special guest, Dr. Linda Levine Midori, professor and author. Now here's Judy, Judy, Judy. Thank you again, Lee, for another, we're going to have another wonderful guest here, wonderful half hour, uh, Linda Maduri. Thank Linda you for having me. <laughs> yeah, Linda is a very pretty lady, and she's extremely talented. Thank you. And uh, you have this book here, it is called Therapeutic, Therapeutic. <laughs> You say it because I have an accent. Therapeutic <laughs> Thematic Arts Programming, and it's for older adults, oh. as well as those with any cognitive problems, as well as Alzheimer's disease. Uh-huh. Now, I don't even know what question to ask you first about how do you, what does this mean? What's in this book? Well, let me start by saying that we're right now living in a world which is rapidly aging. And many of us don't want to look at the aging aspect, but in fact, across the United States, 78 million baby boomers are going to turn 65 by the year 2010. Uh -huh. And that means that our older population, our population in general, is going to shift to an older population as we enter middle age. And with that, comes a host of medical issues and problems. We're living longer, we are well, um, we also have technology, medical technology, that enhances our lifespan. And where this uh, book came out of, Therapeutic Thematic Arts Programming, was the 25 years I've spent as a therapist in nursing homes, assisted living, daycare programs, providing programs therapeutic programs for individuals who are well, as well as individuals who have cognitive impairment. So really that's where the book came out of. And one of the, uh, the book is founded, and I think it's the first of its kind, that it's a methodology that's founded in the neuroscience of the brain and how we're starting to understand the brain since the year 2000. We were never able to look inside the brain before the CAT scan and PET scan, and that's only seven mm -hmm. years ago. Well, I'm just so happy you're doing this because there was a time I took care of elderly people, you know, a little bit here, and I was saying to myself, we are aiding them with medication and care, but what do they have to live for? And yes. so they should somehow improve the living. And from, from what I understand, this is going to improve you're living as you grow older. Exactly. We are, mm -hmm. you know, 10 years ago when we grew older, maybe we thought we'd be live to 80, 80 or 90. Now we're living 10, 20 years in old age. So it's very important to bring in what we call now person-centered programming, where mm -hmm. you take the activities from the person's past, you bring them into present opportunities, to help for future in, in interventions or programs. So what themes do is they bring about themes in our lives for talking about them. And that's how actually the TAP method starts. Therapeutic Thematic Arts Programming is also called the TAP method. So the very first step of the TAP method, would you like me to go over the nine oh, steps for you? please do. Well, the first step of the TAP method has people, whether they're in a group or it can be done over a kitchen counter, talk about a theme. And themes can be personal, like a family or love or how many children you have, or a theme can be environmental or seasonal. And once a theme is picked and everybody talks about how they feel about that per Per that um, theme, then the, f the first stage is that conversation, which is using our linguistic skills. And we know that through Howard Gardner's work, who's a psychologist, that there are sev seven different ways of learning, linguistic, musical, interactive, introspective, um, kinesthetic, and spa spatial. So in the second step of the TAP method, 
we see that we take that group discussion into music and we find music that matches up to the theme. So if we're talking about a holiday, you can bring in music to that theme. If we're talking about a vacation, we can bring in music, sounds of the ocean, sounds of the wind. And then linking the project up to a painting project, with it, which is uh, step number three. And the person goes from painting. Step four is from painting, you bring the person to do a sculpture program. Step five is using sculpture and moving into a movement program. And from movement, step six is moving into poetry and words. And step seven is linking that program from poetry to, and words to a food program, maybe talking about how cultural food affects your life, whether you're from Spain or from Haiti, what types of foods you knew as a child. Uh, we go into step eight, which is to a theme event, because many times in nursing homes and community centers, they have theme programs, a big holiday birthday party or uh, some mm -hmm. such. And then the ninth step is taking a theme event and linking it up to a phototherapeutic activity. That sounds wonderful. And you talked a lot about senior centers or homes where these people live. So what you want to do is just have them use these programs. Well, yes. Um, today there are, it, I was just reading this the other day, there's 18,000 nursing homes in just the, the United States. And out of these 18,000 nursing homes, there are 1.2 million people in those homes who have Alzheimer's disease. And in the United States, in, in total, there are 5 million people with Alzheimer's disease. That number is going to rise dramatically as we see the baby boomers get older, because there's such a large cohort of aging individuals. So are you saying that uh, somebody who has Alzheimer's disease, they would benefit from your program? Or this is what you Absolutely. talk about? Absolutely, yes, because the TAP method uses right brain and left brain. So, for instance, I actually brought with, you, brought with me to show you today uh, a photographic concept, which is arts mm -hmm. for interaction. And this is, this is a photograph of an image. You put it in front of me. Is this? Yeah, I like that. Okay, mm -hmm. this is a photograph of an image. And then the individual, this on Velcro board, can move these pieces mm -hmm. and create their own image. Now we know through the neuroscience that moving pictures, picking these pieces up and putting them down in certain places is actually utilizing our right brain because our right brain is creativity. So creating something, we're stimulating our right brain. If I were to say to you how many pieces are here, and you would answer there's four pieces. Six. No. <laughs> No, there's four. <laughs> That's using your left brain because you're counting. And what we've now discovered is that if you use your right brain and your left brain, your brain wellness is going to be enhanced because oh. we now know that we have what's called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the ability for the cells in our brain, your brain, my brain, everyone, to make new cells when we are stimulated visually or verbally Is or environmentally. Right? Yes. Oh, that's really very, very interesting and promising. Yes, it is. It's very promising because we mm -hmm. never really knew before 2001 that neuroplasticity even existed. We thought up until the year 2000 that we were born and by age five we had our whole brain Develop. developed. And from middle age to old age, we just lost brain cells. Well, that's not true. We don't even have our whole brain developed till age 25, we've learned. 